Hey guys, my name is Brandon, this is Dino Corner. Today's episode, we're not gonna be talking about a specific dinosaur, but instead we're gonna be talking about something that user Egg and Sam on TikTok suggested. They wanted to know, how do we know what dinosaurs sound like? Now, of course, I'm sure you guys know the classic sounds of dinosaurs from movies like Jurassic Park. These are all sounds that are instantly recognizable and we know them. The thing is, these are Hollywood sounds. There's no way these animals would have made sounds like this. Especially concerned the fact that these sounds were mostly composed from mammals, not even relatives of dinosaurs. Yes, I know some of them were composed with sounds from birds and whatnot, but nonetheless, these were all sounds created by sound engineers, and the main reason that these are wrong sounds is because when you look at birds, which are the descendants of dinosaurs, they don't vocalize in the same way that us mammals do. Now, do they sound cool? Yeah, they sound cool. Are they accurate? No. Birds have a structure called a syrinx. The syrinx is just how birds produce sound. It's different than vocal cords in mammals. When air flows through the syrinx, it adjusts and vibrates to make different sounds happen. And that's how birds have all their crazy different sounds, like... Now birds also do have a larynx, but unlike mammals, it does not vocalize. How does this tell us how dinosaurs sounded? Well, birds are the direct descendants of dinosaurs. If birds have the ability to make all these crazy sounds, then it makes sense that some dinosaurs should, right? Well, the problem with that comes when trying to figure out when the syrinx evolved. The oldest fossilized syrinx we have found is actually from Vigavis. It should be noted a syrinx is actually a cartilage type structure. However, it's very rich in different minerals, so when they fossilize, they don't fossilize with the actual cartilage, more of the minerals in the shape of the syrinx. And we found many other fossilized syrinx as well after the Cretaceous and Paleogene extinction. So it's not like this is uncommon, it's just the one for Vigavis is the oldest we have found. Another ancient bird that had a syrinx, at least from what we can tell of evidence, was Presbyornis, and we can assume it had a syrinx because it had tracheobronchial rings that were fossilized. And the reason I talk about both those is because we have found neither of those in non-avian dinosaurs, leading us to believe that many non-avian dinosaurs did not possess a syrinx or the ability to make different vocalizations like what you hear modern birds do. Now, it is to note that some birds do not have a syrinx. Those birds instead make sound through hisses. One good example of that would be New World vultures, which make a sound something like this. The very, very best opportunity, yes, hiss, hiss, so, what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that dinosaurs couldn't roar, they couldn't tweet, or anything like that. Instead, they had a different approach to communication. Some professors from the University of Texas did brain scans on Tyrannosaurus rex fossils, so in those scans they were able to locate where the auditory processing organs were, and from that were able to determine the kinds of frequencies that these animals were able to hear. And they found something very interesting. They found that these organs were better adapted to hearing low frequency sounds. Any sounds that are below about 20 hertz. These are ones that normally humans don't hear. Other animals can hear them, or rather they can feel them. And what this means for dinosaurs, their relatives that generate low frequency sounds are like the cassowary and the Eurasian bittern. They're able to produce these using closed mouth vocalization. This means they don't have to open their mouth to make the sound. Alligators are also ones that do this. You can see in mating season, when alligators are trying to entice females, they make these very low frequency sounds that will even rattle water off their back. The fact that we can tell dinosaurs could 
process low frequency sounds means they could make low frequency sounds, which means they probably employed closed mouth vocalizations. And they made sounds that were so deep and just pounding that if we were around, we probably wouldn't hear it, but we would feel it. There's actually been some people who have made the best modern examples they could of ideas of how some theropods would have sounded using low frequency sound. I'll play these examples right now. Now, of course, non-avian dinosaurs also includes the different ceratopsians and hadrosaurs. Well, don't worry, hadrosaurs could make sounds like this too. One good example being Parasaurolophus, which actually has a wonderfully well-known internal structure to its horn. There's been 3D scans done of the horn so we can actually see how that big resonating chamber in its crest looked. And also from that, we're able to tell kind of how sound would go through it and what sounds it would make. Our best guess is the sounds would be something like this. Now these are all clips taken from the YouTube channel Dangerville. They go through a lot of stuff to actually look and try to produce the most accurate examples they can of what they believe some dinosaurs would have sounded like. If you want to hear more, I'd recommend going to that channel. They have several other videos of what Brachiosaurus would sound like, what Velociraptor would sound like, a whole lot of examples. They're really cool. They also talk about other nerdy shit like Godzilla, which I'm very okay with. All right, so a quick recap of exactly every point I covered in this video. The way we hear dinosaurs in media are not how they actually sounded. These are Hollywood creations of what they believe dinosaurs would sound like. Birds produce sound through a special organ called a syrinx, which is not present in dinosaurs. At least as far as we can tell, it is not present. Professors at the University of Texas were able to do brain scans on Tyrannosaurus rex and determined it was able to process low frequency sounds, which also means it could make low frequency sounds. This leads us to believe that dinosaurs could engage in closed mouth vocalization and were able to talk to each other over miles away. Once again, I want to give a shout out to the YouTube channel Dangerville. They're the ones I got all those vocalization sounds from. They have many other videos on the vocalizations of dinosaurs. They're all really cool to watch. I highly recommend watching them. All right, once again, I want to thank you guys for watching this video, and hopefully that provides just a little more insight on what we believe dinosaurs sounded like. Also, once again, don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell notification icon to know whenever a new video goes up. And don't forget, every Wednesday there is a video talking about a specific dinosaur. And this week we're going to be talking about a very interesting Dromaeosaur that I think some of you guys will like. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, my name is Brandon, this is Dino Corner, and I will see you next time. Bye.